back in time with me as we explore the darker side of the Victorian railways, where echoes of history whisper stories of tragedy and demise. I'm your host, Pete, where we will delve into the chilling tales of deaths on Victorian railways. From mysterious accidents, join me on a journey through the shadows of the past. But be warned, as we unravel these spine-tingling narratives on the line of history. We look at historical records and eyewitness accounts. Each story is a window into a bygone era. And don't forget to subscribe, like and share. October the 9th, 1869, on Saturday evening, an accident occurred which might easily have proved fatal and which will have no doubt salutary effect on boys who are in the habit of climbing behind carts and wagons and rulers. A boy, seven years of age, son of Mr. Rickardson, confectioner of Driffield. He was climbing behind the railway ruley when his leg was caught in the wheel in the spokes at the bottom of the ruley and he could only be extricated by sawing off one of the spokes. One of the small bones of the leg was broken and he was bruised in other places. This ought to act as a powerful warning not only to youth but also to drivers of vehicles not to allow boys to climb behind the carriages. May the 6th, 1881, engine off the line. The engine of the Malton train due at Driffield at 8am on Monday morning got off the line near Driffield station. Fortunately, the passengers had all got out and the engine and carriages were shunted onto the siding and onto the turntable. There was a horse box to be placed on the main line and the accident is supposed to have originated in what is called fly shunting. That is, the horse box was sent onto the main line but before the points could be arranged after the passage of the horse box the engine struck the points and was thrown off the line. But the horse box preceding the engine remained on the rails. As soon as the accident occurred Occurred, telegrams were sent to Malton and Hull and a considerable time elapsed before the engine got back on the line. December the 14th, 1872, Driffield sudden death. On Saturday the 7th, an inquest was held in one of the waiting rooms at the station before Mr. J.M. Jennings, the coroner, touching the death of Isaac Best, railway guard, who died very suddenly within the station. The deceased had been employed by the line for many years, alternating taking the Driffield and Malton and Malton and Thirst lines once a fortnight. On Saturday morning, the first Malton train arrived at Driffield at about its usual time and the guard appeared in his usual health. He was talking for a short time to the driver of the omnibus from the Bell Hotel and the latter had only just turned to leave when he heard a female scream. On turning round he saw the deceased lying on his back in the entrance of the booking office at the station. Mr Middleton of the goods department was present immediately and the doctor was sent for but Best breathed heavily six or seven times and expired. Eleanor Buckless of the refreshments room stated that the deceased was a particularly sober man but he had often complained to her about pain and tightness of the chest. Dr Eames said the body presented no marks of violence but appearance was consistent with the deceased having died from a diseased heart. A certificate from Mr Dealey of Malton was handed in stating that Best had manifested symptoms of heart disease for some time and that he was under his treatment. The jury returned the verdict accordingly. Deceased was about 60 years of age. He had left a widow who is at present seriously ill and has five children. On the suggestion of Mr H Angus, the jury presented their fees to the widow and the coroner added a liberal donation. July the 25th, 1874, Driffield Local Board and the Railway Crossing. The clerk was in receipt of a letter from the North Eastern Railway Company, acknowledging receipt of the letter from their board, addressed to them on the fourth instant with respect to the crossing at the east end of the station. The company stated that inquiries would be made. The chairman said he believed it was the intention of the railway company to flag the footpath up to the rails on either side and between the rails to provide a wooden footway. 
August the 21st, 1875, Driffield accident on the railway. A man named Brown, an assistant shunter on the line, was, on Tuesday, riding on top of the step of the engine. When passing a crossing, he came into collision with a truck, which projected from the siding. The violence of the collision may be imagined from the fact that the truck was sent along for several yards. Brown, who was caught on the hip, was seriously, but not dangerously hurt, and is progressing favourably. Driffield accident. On Saturday last, Tom Garner, a little boy whose parents reside in Washington Street, was being lifted onto the railway rally by another boy when his foot was caught between the spokes of the wheel. The result was a broken leg and a terribly crushed foot. Under the care of Dr. Ridpath, he is going on all right. December the 18th, 1875. Driffield Petty Sessions of the North Eastern Railway versus Frank Kitchen. The defendant was charged with an offence against the railway company's bylaws. From the evidence, it seems that on the 24th of November last, he was at Driffield Station. When the noon train to Hull was about to start, he would neither get in or out of the way. He was standing so near that the guard, Samuel Sanderson, dare not give the signal for the train to start. And on the guard trying to move him, the defendant dealt him a blow to the cheek and tore his coat and waistcoat. The defendant said he was very drunk at the time and was now very sorry. He was fined, including cost, £1 and 14 shillings. October the 4th, 1879, Driffield Petty Sessions. George Evans, late of Driffield, was charged with being intoxicated at Driffield Railway Station on the 8th of September. Mr. Campbell represented the company and the case was proved by a porter named Gordon, ordered to pay 13 shillings costs. January 3rd, 1880. Driffield local news of a sudden death on Monday morning. The body of James Hope, butcher, was found near the platform at the railway station, dead. On Tuesday evening, an inquest was held by the East Riding coroner, Mr Jennings. This was held at the Bluebell Inn at Riverhead. Selina Bryan said that the deceased was her cousin. About half past ten Saturday night, he went to her house and asked to sit up. He dare not lie down. He said he was going to Cottage Hospital. I let him stay and about half past eleven, I left him sitting up. I had gone out Sunday morning when the deceased got up. He came from Filey and usually came to our house when he came over. He came over again Sunday night and sat up again. Shortly after ten, he called up my brother, James Dale, who had seen him walking about some time. He had an order for the hospital. James Dales said he resided with last witness and deceased was his cousin. He came to their house about nine o'clock on Sunday night, but would not go to bed, as he said he could not rest. He complained of difficulty in breathing and had not been able to lie in bed for a length of time. Soon after he called me up, and when I got downstairs, he was walking about. I asked him if he would have a doctor and he said no. He said he would go have a walk out. He went down by the railway station and he said he felt relieved. As we came back, he knocked at the White Horse Inn to get some whiskey, but they would not get up. He said he would go to his brother's and went in the direction of the police station. This was about quarter to two. PC Baker said that at quarter to two he met the deceased and Dales near the church. Deceased said he wanted some brandy as he was very poorly. He said he was going to the cottage hospital. He further said he would go to his brother's where he might get some brandy. They both went in the direction of Middle Street and I to the north end. PC Sharp said he was passing the station and found the deceased laid at the platform end. On speaking to to him, received no answer and on examination he found that he was quite dead. He laid near the station gate but on his back, with both hands in his pocket. His hat was about a foot from his head. It was about half past five. On his person was one shilling and one day. A knife, a bottle, which the doctor said had contained gin, and a box 
with two pills in. Dr Ridpat said the deceased went to him last Saturday. He was an outpatient at Cottage Hospital and was suffering from asthma. He prescribed for him and he did not see him until Monday morning when he was found dead. There were no marks of violence upon his body, nor had he any reason there had been an injury. There were no signs of heart disease and in his opinion, death was attributable to exhaustion and exposure. The jury returned the verdict to that effect. The deceased was a Driffield man and it is rather remarkable coincidence that his father was found dead at the other end of the platform some years ago. Driffield Local News Shocking Fatal Accident About 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening, a youth named George Francis Hebden, 19 years of age and employed as a gateman at the Wandsford Road crossing of the North Eastern Railway, met with a shocking death. It seems that the good train he was shunting near the signal station and a wagon being knocked down, that is, sent with some force and allowed to travel by itself towards the other wagon, to which it was to be attached. The deceased ran towards it, put the brakes down and ran in front with the intention of getting between in order to couple it. When it reached the other wagons, he was just too late. However, his head was caught between the buffers, breaking his skull and driving a portion of the brain, causing instant death. Deceased had no business whatever to meddle with the wagons and no one was to blame except himself. An inquest was held on Tuesday evening at the Mariner's Arms Inn before Mr Jennings when the jury returned a verdict of accidental death. March the 19th, 1881, Driffield Petty Sessions. Hannah Monkman, 36, a respectably clad stranger, was committed to the sessions on the charge of stealing a waterproof cape the property of Mr John Sokol from a waiting room at Driffield Station, committed for six weeks. It was John Sokol who had the original bookstore at the railway station at Driffield and has now started off a shop in Driffield which is still there today. August the 20th, 1881, death in a railway carriage. On Tuesday morning, an inquest was held by Mr Jennings at the railway station on the body of Mr John Sugden Neal, a retired merchant from Croydon who died the previous evening in a railway carriage whilst travelling between Beverley. Driffield. It was given in evidence that the deceased was spending a short season at Bridlington Quay and on Tuesday took the train to spend the day at Beverley. He was apparently in his usual health during the day. Shortly after leaving Beverley in the evening, he fell forward in the carriage and to all appearances died almost immediately. On arriving at Driffield, he was removed to a waiting room and Dr Ridpath was sent for. The doctor, however, pronounced him dead. Mrs Neal stated that the deceased had complained of some time for shortness of breath and his medical attendant had told her that he had heart disease. They had hurried somewhat to catch the train at Beverley. Dr Ridpath had not the slightest doubt that the deceased had died from natural causes and after hearing the evidence was of the opinion that it was heart disease. The jury returned a verdict to that effect. July the 12th, 1884, Driffield Serious Accident. A young man named Milner, employed in the goods department at the railway station, was placing a waterproof cover on a truck on Thursday afternoon. He being on the truck, pulling at the cover when it yielded to his strength more rapidly than he looked for and he fell onto the metals cutting his head open in a fearful way. He was picked up. He was picked up in an insensible condition. Dr Wood was sent for and the unfortunate man was removed to his home where he now lies in a very precarious condition. January the 9th, 1886, Driffield, shocking fatal accident. A very sad and fatal accident occurred at Driffield Railway Station late on Monday night. A porter named Gio Oxendale, aged 46, part of whose duty was to put out the signal lights after the departure of the last train, which was due at about 10 o'clock. This went as normal for that purpose, and, and his wife went 
in quest of him. She found him laid dead in the coal depot sidings. It is conjectured that in the darkness he had walked into the pit and broken his neck. Mr Jennings held an inquest on Wednesday evening when the jury returned the verdict of the death from the dislocation of his neck by a fall. May the 18th, 1895. On Tuesday evening, one of the carriages of the express train between Scarborough and Hull was found to be on fire after leaving Driffield Station. It was stopped at Cranswick and the carriage was detached. eighteen ninety seven on Monday afternoon an inquest was held at the Mechanics Institute in Driffield relevant to the death of James Brown aged sixty four who met with an accident at the railway station on Wednesday afternoon after the jury had viewed the body at the deceased residence on Wansford Road evidence was taken the first witness being Kate Hutchinson wife of a signalman who spoke to the identification of the deceased. Walter Scott, a goods porter, said he was sheeting on Wednesday. He saw the deceased get down between the two wagons as if to go to the warehouse and then he heard him shout out. Witness followed him to the warehouse where he had heard him say, they've killed me at last. He was conscious but never said how the accident had occurred. Dr Bell stated he was sent for and found him at his home where he had been conveyed. He was suffering in great pain chiefly on the left side of his chest. There were no marks but a slight abrasion on the abdomen. The symptoms he showed pointed to a fractured rib and witness bound him up and he attended him until the time of his death. The jury returned a verdict of accidental death. The deceased had been in the employ of the company between 25 and 30 years. This is the first fatal accident that occurred at Driffield Station in a great number of years. The funeral took place Wednesday afternoon, the remains being followed by a good number of the railway men who had subscribed for a beautiful wreath. November the 23rd, 1901 accident on the railway. A singular and unfortunate accident was sustained on Monday at the Driffield railway station by Fred Watson, a goods porter. He was engaged in sheeting a wagon and was jammed between the wagon and the warehouse. His collarbone was broken, his chest injured and it was feared some ribs were broken. First aid was rendered by several of the railway employees and he was afterwards removed home on a stretcher and attended by Dr Bell. March the 15th, 1947, Shunter killed by a train at Driffield, knocked down by a train which had only returned to service on the previous day, following a 10 day hold up by the snow. Walter Staver, 32, of Market Wheaton, was employed at the Driffield railway station but was killed instantly on Tuesday morning. Staffer was helping in shunting trucks into the siding and standing within a few yards of the Wansford Road crossing Driffield when he was hit by the 7am upline train from Bridlington to Market Wheaton and Leeds. Staffer leaves a widow, a six year old boy. He lived at York Road, Market Wheaton, where until eight weeks ago he was employed on the railway as a goods porter. He accepted a new appointment as a shunter and he went into lodgings at Driffield with an LNER colleague, Mr George Stevenson of Bridge Street. He served in the army during the Second World War and returned to railway service on January 21st, 1946. October the 7th, 1916. At the Driffield Police Court on Thursday morning, James F. Swales, chimney sweep, was summoned for assaulting a railway guard at Driffield on May the 17th. Robert Harry Smith, Inspector, North Eastern Railway Police, said he was the guard of the train leaving Driffield at 8.20 on the above date when the defendant, who was unfit to travel with ordinary passengers, entered the van. He was in a drunken state and commenced to use bad language and chucked the witness's equipment on the floor and then assaulted him with his brush. The train was stopped and the defendant was removed with the assistance of the station staff. The train being delayed six minutes, he was fined five pounds and two months imprisonment. January the 6th, 
1917. A somewhat serious accident happened on the railway crossing near the station on Wednesday evening at about 5 o'clock to a man named George Horsley of North Frodingham, whom it seemed was driving a trap over the crossing at a good speed when it overturned and he was thrown onto the metals. Immediately, attention was given to the man, first aid being rendered by Mr F Marsh, one of the porters. He was removed to the railway tavern in an unconscious condition and services of Dr Brand were summoned. On his recovery, he was later removed home. I'd like to say thank you for watching this episode of uh, Deaths on the Railway. If you have enjoyed it, please like, share and subscribe. Definitely hit that thumbs up button, write in the comments and perhaps we'll do another one. Take care.